Okay, Mark, Rob, so you talked about how it, how it works in part one there. Now, I understand they're like the different distances, a bit like horse racing. So, but I mean, pigeons are all going to different places. So how do you know he's won? Well, every, when, you, when you join a club, your local club, where you take your birds on a Friday evening or a Thursday evening for Saturday race, you go up there and, and the secretary of that club, when you join, he has to send your, he gets the, the uh, ordinate survey map of your house. And in, in an ordinate survey map, it will have your shed or your garage, whatever's in your garden, will show on an ordinate survey map. That map is then pin, pin pricked and sent to the RPRA of where they then measure every race point, what we race from, which could be Devon, France, Cornwall, and that measures to, to the direct distance to your back garden where your shed is. So it is within five yards, that measurement in a dead straight line is the distance you fly from all these races. And then on a Saturday night, we go up the club and we put the birds through what used to be a ring and they was rubbered when you wrote down the number and then they come back to the loft, you used to take the rubber off, put it in a clock, strike the clock, that would print the time what the pigeon came home and how long he took to do the race. And then we would put the time that he took to, to do it over the distance, divide it by 60, and it will give you that pigeon's speed over the whole terrain of that race. And the one with the fastest speed on the day will win the race because obviously someone might fly 10 miles further or 50 miles further. So he gets the time allowed for that pigeon to do that 50 miles. And, uh, and then if he's going faster, then he will win the race. And are, they, are some pigeons bred to be like sprinters and other ones bred to yep. be stayers? Yep, there's, uh, you've got sprint, middle distance and long distance and, su and extra long distance. Um, Sprint racing is roughly 50 to 150 miles. Middle distance is roughly 150 to 300 miles. Then you've got distance racing, which is 350 to 500. And then extreme distance, which is the Pepions and the Barcelonas, which is over 700 miles. And do we know, obviously it's a natural instinct for the pigeons to find mm. their way back. Do we know, do they have to sort of go up and fly around for a bit until it clocks in or do they know straight away where they no, are because well, they've been driven down they've not flown where they, yeah, where they start well from. when they go there like it, it, it when you first train the babies obviously they've got to get their bearings so the more you train the more experienced they are the quicker they're going to leave the site which is obviously what you want you want them to leave as as quick as you can to win the race so obviously the first time you train the babies, they might fly around for five minutes in circles, wondering where they are to get their bearings. They will keep doing this, but the more you take them, the quicker you take them to the race point or the, the training point, that they realise as soon as they get out of the crate, they know exactly where they've got to go without losing a second. And most races, um, you'll see, that, like we've, had, we've seen videos of the releases, they will release five or 6,000 pigeons and within a minute of them 6,000 being released because they're all on a, a mechanism on the lorry. They all go on one lorry in a crate and we can, you can get 2,000, 3,000 pigeons on one lorry and they're on a release mechanism where all the crates are tied with a, with a holder like that holding all the crates fronts up and within 10 seconds them five to 6,000 pigeons will be released together. So they've all got the same start. And obviously it's the first one back that wins that race. So is, is training them up all about getting, you know, I'm giving them the, the correct feed and, you know, getting them to know where they are, or can you actually, do you actually get them fit? Is that possible to get them fit like you would a racehorse? Well, it really and truly, when they start roaming, as I said previous, that's when they're getting their self fit. And they're, they're enjoying their flying. If, if they're fed, if they're fed a, a good balanced diet, they will want to fly. They will love flying. So they will go out and they will fly for an hour, hour and a half, you know, find their way backwards, uh, back to the loft, or they just fly around in the loft enjoying it. That really is getting them fit enough to train. But then once the training uh, starts, that is when the pigeons 
have got to start putting in the time and, and doing the time what you want from training. You know, it's, it's uh, if, if you go 40 miles and the wind's dead against them, they should do roughly 45, 50 mile an hour. If you take them training 60 miles and the wind's right behind them, they will, do, they will touch 70 miles an hour on them, on them days. And obviously, you know, if they fly around at the start and on 70 mile an hour race, you'll be looking for a lot of, you know, you, 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 you've lost the race before you've started. Okay, now you, you mentioned that you sort of, uh, you sit in the garden a bit like a mum waiting for their teenagers to yeah. come home from the disco. Um, these days with GPRS and that, uh, can you be monitoring exactly where they are at all times? Yeah, you can. Well, we, we've moved on now for where I said earlier on about the rings and the rubbers, what we put on the pigeons on a Friday. We've now got what we call ETS rings, which are computer chips, really, which we assign to each ring number of the pigeon. And on a Friday night, he goes over a computer pad and that registers it on a piece of paper. We print that off so you know every pigeon on the computer chip what his ring number is. We've all got a computer at home which is, goes underneath their trap board. So as soon as the pigeon walks over the, the trap board with a computer pad underneath it, that records his time, uh, of what time he come and what the ring number is of that pigeon. Uh, that is just to, to work out who, who's won the race when we go up the club. But we have got trackers now on pigeons where they can put another tracker on where they can see where they're coming from the race point and what they're doing. And also, on international races of where we race against Belgium, Holland, Germany, France and England and Wales, all on the same race from Barcelona or Pepion, they have got trackers on their, on their clocks. So when the bird lands in France or in Spain, it tells you exactly on your phone where the first one has landed, where, it's, where it lives in France, Holland, Belgium, England, It'll tell you the time he's got it and everything. So you can roughly work out when you need a pigeon on how far they, sh how how far they fly. And what, um, what is the maximum distance or race that there, there is? The maximum in this country is Barcelona, which is Spain. And uh, Mark Gilbert this year uh, won Barcelona the first time ever that a pigeon flew Barcelona on the day in England, which was a fantastic feat. When you think he's racing against pigeons 300 miles less than him, you know, thousands of pigeons, seven or 9,000 pigeons in them races, and he was the first one back to England before they clocked in, well, not before they clocked in, but on, on the speed over the race from France, Germany, Holland, Luxembourg, Netherlands, all of them. So it was a fantastic feat, and I don't think it'll ever be done again. So would a bird like that be the sort of bird that would make a million quid? Yeah, that would do. So what in the real world, I mean, what would be sort of average? If you, if, you know, somebody did want to get going on it, what would be a decent sort of priced one that you'd need to invest in? Well, you could go, if you was just starting up now, you could go to good flyers in England that are, that are winning in their areas and, and in, you know, everywhere. And, and you could pick, you know, you can, you can get, buy pigeons off of them for 50s, 100 pounds. They're to race, because they'll be off for the grandchildren of their best, really. But if you want them out of their top super pigeons, you're talking about five to 10,000 pound each. Right, so is it like horse race? I mean, you, know, you do hear the odd, the odd story where somebody's picked one up at the sales for 10 grand and it's gone on and won a group race. Yeah. But is it similar with pigeons? Is there a gulf between the top and the bottom? Or could one of these that you've got suddenly turn out to be an absolute world champion? No, that, that is the beauty of the, the pigeon sport, really, because it doesn't matter how much you pay for pigeons. It doesn't guarantee that they're ever going to be any good because a lot of the things with a champion pigeon is the way he's, he's, the way he's raced, the way he's uh, fed, and the person that's racing it, if he knows what he's doing training it wise and things like that so it le it's a level playing field really although you can't buy the million pound pigeons you can still compete with them uh, on, a, on a level basis once you've got yourself established a, t a team of pigeons 
Okay, now I'm interested about this. So I'm assuming this, the, the buying and selling the pigeons is more about the breeding than racing. Because if one knows this is home, mm. can it be sold to somebody in Devon and be taught no. that that's home? No, because uh, when you pay a lot of money for pigeons, like these, these ones we pay, you're paying five and 10,000 pounds for, they will just be go to stud. You know, you, you couldn't afford to really try and let them out because obviously their omen instinct will take them back, straight back to their old loft. But in saying that, if, if someone local packs up pigeons uh, in, in, in within a 10 or 15 mile around your loft and he takes his loft down, for instance, you could break his birds to your loft and they would race back to you eventually because pigeons are quite clever. They will try to get back to the loft where they know they live. And if there's no loft there, they will come back and look for the loft they've just come out of, especially if you've bred babies out of them. So if you want to, what we call break pigeons to a new address, you get them settled in their new address, let them have children like babies, and then get them with their hen and sit in eggs, and then you let them out. Their first instinct will be to go back to their old original loft because that's all they know. But when they see the loft's not there or whatever, they will find their way back to your loft, believe it or not. Okay, and how, I mean, how often would a bird not come back? I mean, are there predators and, the, you know, uh, what predators happen? Predators are the worst. This last, I'd say, 10 years is, is a lot what's killing the sport of pigeon racing. Because, you know, we watch Country File and, uh, and all these programmes of where you got all these bird twitches and that, think it's fantastic to put bird boxes up on buildings in, in high streets with peregrine falcons up there uh, and make nests up there when they're never supposed to be there. You know, they're, they're supposed to be rocks like on, on seaside uh, rocks and all that and out in the countryside. They're not supposed to be in towns and cities and now we are absolutely so overrun with peregrines that we're losing masses of pigeons being destroyed every week for it. What about sort of cats and things like that? Do you have to cats you can control because you know you can put a fence up. You know you keep your shed locked up, obviously when you're there, and, and only open when you're when you you know you don't leave it open or foxes and things like that. They're, they're no problem. But the peregrine, you 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 know he's he's diving at 150 miles hour. Pigeon's got no chance, and it's not only the pigeon that he takes out the out the sky. It's what he does to the rest, the fear he puts into the rest of the pigeons that scatters them all over the place and a lot of them go in trees or smash into houses and, and die. What I was going to ask finally for this part, um, is it just the, the male pigeons or is it, do you race or do you race females as well? We race both, we race males and females, but years, going back 40 years, everyone raced what we call natural, which was you race the cock and hen in the same box to either eggs or to a baby. But now we, I'd say 95% of people race widowed, of where you separate the cock from the hen. Once they've reared their babies and had their eggs, you take the hen to a different section and the cock's in a different section. So they only see each other on a Friday. And then on a Friday, you, you put them together. So they're both really happy to see each other. Then you send them both to the race. And in that way, they know when they come home, they're allowed to go together for the rest of the day until Sunday of where you separate them again and they're in their own sections until the following week. So they get used to a system of what well, they want to race back to their, their home really and their box to see their hen and the hen wants to see the cock. And there's no, there's no danger of one of those females getting sullied by a randy wood pigeon or something? Well, they, they do sometimes, but uh, or even if their cock's not back first, they'll have the cock next door because uh, <laughs> but that's life, I suppose. <laughs> cock green in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>